All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today, super excited about the guest I've got lined up for us today. Uh, this is going to be a really good conversation. Uh, if you're out there trying to figure out where you want to be, who you want to become, uh, if you're kind of in that middle ground of discovering who you truly are and what you're truly meant to be, then the conversation we're about to have today is going to be fantastic. Today, I have with us Mark Collins. He's actually come to us from down over in California which is a little bit of an early morning for him. So we're super grateful that he joined us here today. So Mark is a husband, a father, and a business and life coach with a passion to see everyone equipped to be the hero they were created to be. He's also the author of Life Mastery, Living Life by Design and Not by Default. I love, I love that little tagline, life by design versus by default. I think that a lot of folks do that. And we'll dig into deeper what he means by that and maybe some things that you can do to try to help you live by design versus by default. He's also the creator of many life mastery online courses. So he's uh, taken this, this phrase of life mastery, and he's also turned it into different online courses. And we'll talk about that as we get along in the episode today as well. Mark is on a mission to mentor others to positively change their lives and to unleash their true callings. And, uh, so let's dig in to see what that exactly means from Mark. It's going to be a lot of fun. Without further ado, Mark, appreciate you coming on. This is going to be a fun conversation. Thanks for having me here, Andy. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So I always go through a lot of the bullet point list there at the beginning, but I always love to open it up right off the bat and have the folks get to know you a little better from your words, right? Uh, tell everybody a little bit more about yourself. I mentioned you're coming to us from California, uh, but tell us about your upbringings, where, you, where you've been where you kind of challenged your, and made yourself some changes and then obviously where you're at today. Yeah, I appreciate you asking, Randy. So uh, if you were to look at my youth, uh, what you would find is a young man who by the time he was 12 years old, which for me was the sixth grade, had lived in five different states in one foreign country. The foreign country was Germany. And, and no, we didn't have a great time there. I was actually four years old by the time we left. So I didn't get to see a lot of Germany. But what I did see is a lot of a lot of different areas. My dad was in the military, which he probably guessed by the, all the traveling we did. And so that meant that we were in a lot of places, a lot of cultures, and really enjoyed parts of that. You know, the part that you really love is being able to experience different parts of the world and, and seeing that there's a bigger bigger world out there than maybe what you're living. Even as a young person, challenge with that is that that was five different places of friendships and relationships and uh, you know, getting familiar with what, you know, what normal looks like in Oklahoma versus Oregon versus Utah versus North Dakota, right? So um, those were, you know, challenges and and successes that were in that, which probably was why I felt so comfortable moving to California in my early 20s uh, on my own, just packing up and going. I, I tell people this, Randy, I was actually coming to California when I told my parents, which was a great thing to tell them. I told them I was coming to California to become a rock star. <laughs> I had gone through one year of college and really just wasn't feeling it. It really wasn't where I was at at that point and feel like there was a future that I wanted at the other end of that. And so, um, you know, honestly, it was going away from something more than going towards a dream. But uh, that was me. And so uh, you can imagine how that freaked out my parents thinking back on it now with adult kids. <laughs> that had to be a challenging time. Um but what did it look like growing up? My dad was in the military. I, I tell people that he wasn't a drill instructor, which if you look at movies and, you know, the super strong, you know, tough as nails. I mean, he was definitely that guy. And growing up with a father like that, there was a benefit and blessing in having a strong father figure in the house. The challenge and the, and the uh, thing that I needed to overcome growing up was seeing a, a vision and an understanding of what a man looks like from my father's picture and knowing that I didn't measure up. So for me, you know, growing up was some of each, right? So there was educational things, struggling a little bit in school, you know, not everybody is graded every subject. And unfortunately, in school, you can kind of hear some of that. I don't, I don't know if you know that, but I, in the areas and schools I went to, they weren't always kind when they found out you weren't as, you know, adept at math or science or whatever the thing was. So, but um, yeah, that was me growing up, a, a young man who believed that there was a, a call on his life, that there was an impact that he was supposed to have, which as you read my bio, is part of my understanding I, and my belief for every person, uh, but not really knowing how to get there, right? Feeling like I didn't measure up to my dad and so I didn't measure up as a man and growing up trying to figure out ways of overcoming that, of, of really proving my worth and my value. So for me, it was studying martial arts, got a second degree black belt and, and achieved that, you know, 
I, I told my wife when I was in my 30s, that's when I stopped doing martial arts because I told her I was training for a fight. I was probably never going to get in. And so while, you know, it has value and worth, um, but, you know, I was trying to strive to become who my dad was versus who I was. Same thing happened in business where I was succeeding in business. We sold a business we had for a mid six figure uh, profit, which was awesome. You know, having a successful business is amazing. You're part of a small minority. The thing that didn't happen, though, was that fear of failure, that imposter syndrome that I had going into it, I had leaving it. It didn't change because of success. And so that took me on a journey of figuring out that success and outward accomplishment and those things that you're trying to do to replace an identity are simply that a replacement. And at the end of the day, the things that I was struggling with, I continue to struggle with. And so my journey into adulthood was trying to figure out how do you live it out? So you've talked about some of the products and, and projects I had my book, Life Mastery, Living Life by Design, and my course, Life Mastery. It all stemmed from a, a young man that believed there was more than the life he was living and tried different things to get there and didn't find them. And so for me, I created it and created something that brought transformation, not just change, which brings us to this conversation today. That's awesome. So I would love to unpack the whole demographic as far as with your father. Uh, and I mentioned to you before we hit record, yeah. that really resonates with me a lot. Uh, just briefly, uh, just to kind of give you a little bit of, of, of texture as far as my, my background as well. So mine was sports. I was, so my father was very tough on me to, to excel in sports. I was pretty good. Uh, meaning for, I was in a county school, so I was pretty good amongst my peers here. Uh, but he was always pressuring me to do better, be better, do better. Uh, didn't matter. I, I'm six foot at best. I could jump a little bit. Basketball was my thing. Baseball too. Uh, but he was always tough on me. He was always, uh, he was never physically abusive, but he was definitely emotionally and, and mentally abusive to me. I, mean, I was always trying to live up to his expectations Yeah. to the point where I had gotten married, uh, young family. And I realized it's almost like it just automatically dawned on me that I had been living up to his expectations my entire life. Yeah. And I didn't know what to do about that. It's almost like it, it hit me right in the face and I didn't know what to do with it. So I moved away from him. I didn't go to a different state, but I had to get away from him. I, we moved cities within the state of Indiana, but I had to get away from him as well. That was the first thing I could think of that I needed to do to kind of get some separation is try yeah. to figure out this discovery phase of who I was. Can we unpack that just yeah. a little bit more as far as from, from how was that for you when you were realizing that you might've been living in that shadow of your, your father and how you were able to get yourself beyond that uh, to where you are today? Yeah, that's a great question. And thank you for sharing about your life as well. Um, you know, I think what I tell people that I work with is you're either living from who you're created to be or what your life told you you are. And, and so that experience, like with you and with myself, can be in your own household with a father that you're trying to measure up or a father that's letting you know through his actions or his inaction that you're not. Or it can be in school. And, you know, I, I dealt with like the academic issues as well. Not, you know, not horribly, but, you know, at any point, if you don't measure up to what everybody else is doing, you feel like you're less than. And, and you know, so, or tragedy or struggle or issue. I mean, we all have those things. And, and I'm not devaluing them because everybody comes from a different place, but everybody comes from the same place in this. I'm either, again, living from who I'm created to be, who God made me to be in the life that I'm created for, or I'm living from what other folks have told me, what my experiences have proven, lies I believed had required for me to do. And so I'm always trying to measure up to that. So for me, it was, you know, it wasn't sports necessarily. My dad actually played sports in high school, and this shows you how little he communicated in, in some ways, right? He, he'll let you know when you were doing something wrong, but we didn't find out until we went to our, to his, uh, his childhood home that he actually played sports in high school. He never mentioned it. He never mentioned he was good. He received awards. I, we didn't know any of it growing up. And part of that was him not wanting us to try and fall under that umbrella. But, you know, we, we fell under a different one. So for me, it wasn't achieving so I could be somebody. It was believing that what I was doing and who I was wasn't enough. There was always a better way you could do it. There is always something more you could have done or accomplished or what have you, right? It wasn't saying that you're not measuring up but it's saying it through the things that and expectations and disappointments and those things that are happening. You know, and, and for me, I don't know about your dad, but for me, my dad was, you know, I mentioned he grew up in, you know, for us, it was in Oregon where his childhood home was. Well, they were in Oregon because his, his mom fled from an abusive alcoholic husband. And so he actually, him and his brother raised themselves without a father figure in the house. So to be even adequate at being a dad, 
was an amazing accomplishment. But even with that and understanding that, there is this unpacking of, but that still didn't change the fact that I felt like I wasn't measuring up. And so for me, it was figuring out, okay, what does that look like lived out? Where did I come from? I don't know, Randy, to be totally honest. There was always this sense that there was more than where I was at. And it wasn't really to please my dad. You know, there's a rebellious stage where you'd kind of, you kind of say, you know, you don't, you know, I don't want to hear your opinion. You know, you're crazy. You know, you stop listening. You kind of build a wall. And I did that first stage in my life as well. But it really is that thing of there's just more. There's more than where I'm at. I believe I'm supposed to be a man of confidence, a man of assurance. I, I believe I'm supposed to, you know, have things that matter to me, matter to me versus trying to prove who I am in the things that I do in the relationships that I have. And so I don't know where it came from, but I, I do know that it was uh, a epiphany over time. I am a, a person of faith. I'm a Christian. And so part of it was, you know, un understanding that as well and, and believing that you know, there's a call and design for my life and, and, and not seeing it lived out in the ways that I had. And like I said, with business success, it was empty with, you know, relational success. It was empty with the finances and all of those. It was empty. Not that those things aren't great accomplishments and bring, bring great blessing to your life. But they're a horrible substitute for an identity. Because at the end of the day, if you don't know who you are, the world has to make up the difference. Which means that every business transaction, every success that you're in, it's it's momentary and it's satisfaction because you need the next one. And so for me, it was kind of unpacking some of those things. And it was a journey over time. It was really trying to be my own man to begin with. And then finding out what part of the walls were that I was running up against. Why it wasn't working. Why I was hitting the wall every time. It was because I was trying to use actions and habits to transform my life when I what I needed was the transformation of identity to really stop living up to and trying to fight against what I believed I was supposed to be so I could believe what I was created to be. Love that. Let's, let's yeah, let's unpack that even a little bit more too. The idea of, so on the podcast, Rich Mind Podcast, I talk about winning within uh, in order to win without, or, you know, I mean, you're inside, uh, that's been my experience. I always, I try to speak from my experience, which is why I love bringing on guests to, to bring in their experiences as well. But the idea that the life-changing thing for me is when I discovered that the harder I worked on me, the harder me, like who I am, what I'm here to do, what I'm here meant to be, um, physically, mentally, emotionally, yeah. the better my life became with my family, with myself with my, even my, my physical surroundings. That was the, the amazing thing for myself. So let's maybe yeah. go into, let's say somebody's hearing this and they're, they're, they understand the, they comprehend what we're talking about at this point, but they're like, okay, where do I even take that? Where do I even begin the process of discovering the true who I am from yeah. within on the inside? And that way I can start making some impact on the outside exterior environment that we're in every day. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's a great point. I appreciate that. And here's the truth of the matter. There's a lot of programs out there that'll help you to change. There's a lot of programs out there that'll give you habits to manage your your mess. Whether it's anger, whether it's insecurity, whether it's, you know, fear of failure, whether it's imposter syndrome, which were a couple of things that I dealt with in my own life. There's a lot of them that bring change that I don't, haven't found one other than what I created that brought transformation. And I say that because, Randy, like you know, right, you can use the wrong program to try and get the right results and you're left where you're at. And what happened with me was I, before becoming a person of faith and, and using the Bible as instruction, what I did was try every personal development program I could, whether it was free or low cost or, you know, whatever I could afford, I got involved in because, again, there was this burning desire to have that guy on the inside be the guy on the outside, to not be a disappointment in my own life, I felt, to to not have success in my life and still feel empty when I'm done, but to really feel like my life is exactly living as I'm created to be. And so in those journeys through personal development, what happened is you're creating habits, right? And what I tell the people I work with is the same habit you create to get there, you're going to have to maintain to stay there. And so if it's just a habit to try and overcome your fear and your insecurity and your this and that, well, mantras don't change anything. They just get you to recite something that you really don't believe. And so at the end of the day, I was doing those things. And what I knew was that I wasn't that person, right? That, that, you know, and again, some programs that I was involved in, it really comes down to the, you know, my life's amazing. If you do the same things that I do, you're going to be amazing like me. And, and while that sounds great in theory, in truth, what my mind and thoughts kept telling me was, well, but I'm not that person. And my thoughts were right. 
I didn't need to convince myself I was like them or was them or I could be them because that was not the truth. And even if I became them, I would be a second, I would be in second place. I'd be a great imitation. And so the thing that transformed and changed was really understanding that for us and for the things that I do in life mastery, it all starts with identity. Who are you created to be? It's the exact same thing that you're talking about. And so the first thing we do is we ask them, invite them to create an I am statement. The very first foundational work after we talk about the transformational strategies of mastering your thoughts, words, and actions is what's your identity? Who are you apart from your things? You know, your title, your position, your your role, your your income, your possessions, you know, all of the things that we use and say, I matter because of. And so we strip all of those away and say, you know, that I am statement, who are you apart from that? If you're a person of faith like me, that's an easy conversation that starts with a conversation with God and said, God, who do you create me to be? But even if you're not a person of faith, there's truth in it that actually works. And it's saying, okay, who am I apart from my things? Apart from all the stuff I'm striving for, who is this man or who is this woman that I'm looking at in the mirror that I'm sitting down with and, and jotting down some ideas and understanding? Because that's the person that you are. Not the person that you were told to be, not the one you were trying to measure up to be, but the one you were created to be. And we tell them that because not only is that not, not just good enough, it's exactly who you're supposed to be. And so for us, it starts with an I am statement. We do a couple of other things, right? It's a couple of tools for us are a celebration list and an accomplishment list. The people I work with, I tell them to start with those. I tell them to do 20. I've done 100. And the celebration list, to be clear, isn't a celebration of the things I've accomplished, but in what I love about me. The question is simply this. What do you love about you? For maybe you, Randy, but myself, I for sure, and a lot of the clients that I work with, our, our, our worst enemy is ourself. Not that we're sabotaging ourselves, but that we aren't giving ourselves enough credit for who we are, right? You look in the mirror and you see the things you're not versus the things you are. And so we transition that with the celebration list of saying, hey, what do you celebrate about you? What's the things about you that you love? And again, it's not accomplishment. It's not the things I've done or completed. It's the person that I am. If you could start in that place of figuring that out, now all of a sudden, along with an I am statement, you start to get a more clear and complete perspective of who you are. And the third is the accomplishment list. And, and I've told, again, my, my clients to create 20, um, but I've done over, I think, 130 at this point. And you, and you know, like I do, Randy, once you get past number 15 or 16, you're, you've done with all the marquee stuff. And now, you know, when I got to 75, 80, it was, you know, I've owned six cars. I paid my bills on time. I show up in relationship on a daily basis. And, and it's all these small things. And, and the interesting thing is in, the more granular you get in seeing your accomplishments, the more complete you get on understanding who you're created to be. In many cases, you know, this is the year of the Olympics. We wait until we've gotten that Olympic gold medal, right? When I've done this, then I'll be able to celebrate me. When I've gotten this level of income, then then I'll be able to do it. When I've established my business and I have my name on it, then I'll feel valued and worthy. And the truth of the matter is, if you take the Olympics for an example, there's no person who wins a gold medal who hasn't celebrated themselves locally, regionally, statewide, and then nationally. The truth of the matter is, if you're going to succeed at a high level, you need to see that you're succeeding at a low level because it's those things that stack wins and help you to understand that you have a track record of success in your life. We have this, I failed, I messed up or whatever. We have these things that we tell ourselves, but the truth of the matter is, every person I know has a track record of success. Well, I get up and go to my job, right? But not everybody does that. Well, I pay my bills on time. Yeah, but but not everybody does that. And if you can celebrate yourself in the small things, then you'll be able to give yourself the motivation and the energy to accomplish the big things. And in that place, having great joy and satisfaction throughout. But when you wait for that marquee moment to finally say, I'm good enough, once you get there, you still don't feel like you are. It's an ever evolving journey. That's been my experience. Yeah. It never stops, it's always continuing. Which is yeah. fascinating. Uh, I don't want to say frustrating, but challenging would probably be a better word at the same time, right? We're always, sure. always trying to grow into who this person we're meant to be. So the question that was coming to my mind, and I appreciate that explanation was, and this has been my, so there again, this is going to be more of my experience, but, and I've worked on it really by myself. But when you start getting that pushback, when you start going within in, in your thoughts, and you have your your I am statements or you're starting to proclaim things that you've done well. And I, but then you've always got that voice in the back of your head saying, yeah, you mentioned it a couple. You said that the phrase, yeah, but yeah, but a few times, right? Yeah, but you've done this or yeah. 
how do you help folks at kind of at the very beginning stages of that journey get through? Is there exercises? Is there like something specific that they can begin to do that maybe they've, they've not tried anything at this point. Uh, you mentioned yeah. you take them through that process and you're in the bringing the beginning parts of your uh, course. And I assume it's probably described in your book as well. So we're definitely going to uh, encourage folks, right. To grab copies of that. But is there anything we can leave folks with even today to help them at that beginning stages when they're starting to have that desire to become more, but they're having that chatter in the back of their mind that's really trying to shut them down, that self-sabotage pattern. Yeah, absolutely. Which is a great segue back to the book and the title that you like, which is Living a Life by Design, Not by Default. The whole title, Life Mastery, Living a Life by Design, Not by Default. And so there's a mindset shift of understanding. Most times, most people, frankly, the vast majority of people I know are living life by default. And it is that thing that you've talked about. It's it's trying to fight the battle after you're in it. It's having thoughts that are kind of sabotaging you. Maybe you're reaching out for a business or you're trying to go for it in a relationship and you're having these things tell you in the back of your mind, ah, you can't do it. You're going to blow Whatever those things are that are happening. What we don't realize is that instead of reactively trying to respond to them, we can proactively give ourselves the right thoughts, words, and actions to actually live out. I didn't know that for most of my life, you know, and you, and, and they typically will help you in personal development programs to kind of do that. The problem is they give you the wrong target to shoot for. The, you're in most times they, it's either one or two things: accomplishment. You know, I want to be a millionaire, so I'm going to speak those things out, or I want to have that spouse of my dreams, or whatever the thing is that you want to do. And so it's it's outcome driven versus, you know, inward focus. Or they'll just give you generic phrases to become a different person or believe that you are. Well, if they don't align with who you believe you are then they won't actually work in your life. They'll just be something, again, habits that you have to maintain to stay there. And so life by design is that secondary option, which is this. You actually have control of your thoughts. You, you know, Randy, I'm sure, because you've done so much work in this, that we have probably, they say, fifty to 70,000 thoughts, right? And I'm not talking about, you know, necessarily all of those, but really there's those portion that you're actually aware of. The ones that we're unaware of are exactly how everybody got to this conversation today. They, they clicked on your YouTube. They clicked on some audio format. They decided to come and listen to something we got here as well. Those are all subconscious thoughts that you just do automatically. But there's those other thoughts that are driving direction, patterns, and actions. And those are the thoughts that you talked about where when something happens, when challenge comes up, now all of a sudden I'm like, oh, you know, I, I remember last time I blew this or I didn't do well at this or whatever the thing is that we're telling ourselves. Well, it is, again, our transformational strategy of mastering your thoughts, words, and actions. But mastering your thoughts, just to unpack that really quickly, is not me giving myself generic ideas of what amazing would look like, whether it's, you know, again, outcome driven by I'm, I'm a millionaire, I'm a business owner, I'm this or that, or income driven, which, you know, you know I, I'm doing these great things, I'm a man of success, I'm a person of fortitude and action or whatever those things are. But using those I am statements, the celebration list and the accomplishment list, you're giving yourselves weapons against the war that you're fighting in your head, but it's not a war of or a weapon of something generic that you're shooting for. It's a confirmation of who you were created to be to begin with. Again, we start with identity, understanding who you're created to be versus what your life has told you. And in that place, what I found, again, change versus transformation is there's a transformation that takes place when you start to see the person you're created to be show up in your life. How do I see that? Because I see that I've got a track record of accomplishment. I've written them down. I see that. And, and I know that it's undeniable whether they're large or small, they're there. I have a celebration list of saying this. I'm a person of value and worth, even if I'm not doing anything. I have character and value in who I am innately. It's not a requirement of success for me to be that. I'm already that to begin with. And this identity of recognizing who you are. And so what we do is we give, you know, affirmations. The affirmation is your identity statement and those things associated with it, reminding yourself ahead of time, reminding yourself before, right? Nobody prepares for battle after they're in it. By then it's too late. You prepare ahead of time and the preparation we use in Life Mastery is a daily understanding of start your day with reminding yourself of who you are. Recognize what you're telling yourself during the day, which again, your thoughts are either aligning with who you're created to be or they're lying to you. There's no in between. There's there's no other option. They're either a, confirming who you are or they're lying to you about you about who you are. And so, in recognizing that and reaffirming who you are, 
those things start to diminish, decrease, and go away. And then all of a sudden, you gain a momentum in your life because now that man, that woman that I affirm that I am, I continue to remind myself that I am, I actually am showing up as that person. I'm recognizing, oh, wow, I acted differently during that stressful situation. I, I actually was able to show up and make quality decisions when everything was getting chaotic around me. Oh, I, I actually did make a mistake. I, I did do something that I didn't mean to do and some negative outcome happened, but I didn't kill myself for it. I didn't beat myself up for it. I recognized it. I transitioned to what a solution was and I moved forward. The person that you believe you are is showing up and here's where momentum is built and where there's a difference between life mastery versus any course that I've been a part of. Once I start showing up as a person I'm created to be, I don't have to remind myself of that anymore, Randy, because I, I know what, you're actually living from that place. Life mastery is living from who you're created to be in every area of your life. You use affirmations and those acknowledgements and the tools that we're using to get to the place of that person showing up. But when I'm showing up as the person I'm created to be, life mastery life, I don't have to remind myself I'm actually living it. And so it's not habits that you maintain for a lifetime. It's transformation that you create so that when that person starts showing up, he shows up all the time. She shows up all the time. I never transition back into the person that was insecure, that was fear of failure, that was dealing with imposter syndrome, because now I'm fully, confidently, completely walking in as a person I'm created to be really quickly. And then I'll stop talking because I'm kind of hard in the conversation. But this is something I tell the people I work with. You're the answer to the circumstance you're walking into. You're not the question. In most cases, we believe we're the question to be answered, not the answer to be given. Meaning we believe that maybe I can figure it out. Maybe I'm capable. Maybe I'll be able to get this thing done or have this answer or find the solution. When the truth of the matter is that I tell the people I work with, again, because I'm a person of faith, I see it throughout all of scripture. You're already created as the person who is the answer to your circumstance. You just don't know it yet. But when you start to see it, now all of a sudden your life becomes a lot easier. I call it effortless excellence when you're living through a place of life mastery. I think that's what we're all striving to achieve ultimately is that effortless mastery. I love that. That was, that was pretty cool. So the thoughts piece, the one thing I've discovered because I'm actively trying to catch my thoughts in, in yeah. real time as much and as quickly as I possibly can. As you mentioned, that, that 50, 60, 80, whatever the number is, as far as thousands of thoughts yeah. we have per day. It's amazing to me as I've gone down this own journey myself, how I can have a situation happen where I'll get triggered by an event or something will happen in my exterior environment, yeah. will trigger off all kinds of things in my mind. Whereas before, before I've done this work on myself, I would just go down negative rabbit trails of whatever, whatever emotion was, was happening at that moment. I've gotten better at catching them in real time and then almost exposing awesome. them. Yeah. Exposing them to the point where then I can respond versus react and then take different actions, which is what I love about your thoughts, words, and actions, right? That kind of goes right along with, with how I've tried to do those things myself. Talk about how that process when you're in the very beginning stages, I, cause I still get triggered even to this day. I'm just better yeah. at seeing it for when it happens. I assume you would have those situations happen yourself. So maybe help folks yeah, as far as understanding, seeing those thoughts, catching those thoughts. You talked about uh, some different affirmations and things like that. Is there anything that any suggestions that you have to catch people really in real time in the moment? Um, to get things kind of headed off at the pass before they start going down some different ra rabbit trails yeah, with their own, their own minds, but then leads to different thoughts, leads to different words, leads to different actions, right? That aren't necessarily positive in their, in their life uh, going forward. Yeah. I think that's great. Well, and first and foremost, the thing that I, I love what you shared is this, this, the journey aspect of it. And, and what I would say with that, and then what are the thing that I try and really in part in the people that I work with is this. So that whole thing that you just talked about, yeah, I used to do this and, I, and I've been there, right? The immediate answer is anger. <laughs> the immediate answer is, uh, something's going wrong. Uh, you start there and then you try and figure it out, right? And, and that's, again, living by default. I can't change it. I just need to deal with it kind of circumstance. But you work towards this in what we call it the life mastery journey and, and working towards who you're created to be. And by the way, just to be very clear, it's, it's the person you're created to be. It's not being perfect. And so first off, a, a mindset shift of the goal isn't me perfect. 
nothing ever happens at any time. I'm bulletproof. I'm Teflon and whatever the thing is that you believe that it's supposed to be. But there is this place of being who you're created to be, which means stuff still happens to Randy, to, to myself included, right? Challenge still happens. Had some relational, you know, conversations that had to be had this week about a person that, you know, I'm, I'm in relationship with, but we are not on the same page as to what that relationship should look like, right? So life happens to everybody. But the thing to do, first and foremost, is to celebrate where you're at. And so for you, I, that's a great example of what we all go through, myself and my students as well. But it's saying, seeing, hey, that's, that's a progress in your journey. You, you talked about it being a journey, and it's something that's lifelong. But what you get, again, celebrating the moments, my accomplishment in the moments is saying, wow, this, I'm not who I used to be here. What used to happen was I would explode, I would, you know, I, I would shrink back, I would I would kind of curl up in my shell. I wouldn't let, you know, whatever those emotional responses that we had to them. But when you start to see that those things are happening, different different results are happening because different decisions are being made. That's a celebration because that shows that your transformation is actually taking place. And hopefully, again, for the people that I work with, it's it's an inspiration to them to say, this is really working. There is this transformation that's happening. You could talk about the science of it, the neuroplasticity. But the truth of the matter is when you recognize a different result because of a different decision, what you're seeing is a different person. And that's an amazing thing. I, I, I think we, again, like with those small accomplishments, we minimize it. So I really wanted to highlight that. So, so how do I deal with it as it comes up and how do I work through it as it's happening, right? You know, there's other things that you can do. So mastering your thoughts, words, and actions, if I can give you a phrase and then I'll go into a solution or something that I use as a quick trigger for a different result. The phrase that I use with my students is this, and it, it, it encapsulates mastering your thoughts, words, and actions. And the phrase that I use, it's actually in my book as well, like Mastery Living Life by Design, which if I could in summary tell you that the book is a, is a quick start guide for the course. The course has everything fully fleshed out in completion. It's 14 chapters in all. Uh, but the book is a quick start guide that gives you tools today to use this week to see change this month. Um, but in that and in the other one, I have this phrase, and the phrase is this, what I think I'll say, what I'll say I'll do, what I'll do I'll become. What you think you say, what you say you do, what you do you'll become. And so cutting it off at the thought process because it's the initiation of everything that happens afterwards is important, but they're all tied together. That's why we have mastering your thoughts, words, and actions. Because really quickly, again, your words will do two things. They're an affirmation of who you believe you are, and then they're, and they're also an instruction to live it out. We can get into the science of it. We don't necessarily have to do that here, but the result is simply this. When I speak something out about myself, I'm doing two things, reminding myself of who I am and giving myself instructions on living it out. So if, again, your thoughts don't align with who you're created to be, then they're lying to you. If my words don't align with who I'm created to be, then they're lying to me. And then your actions are simply this. I'm either acting from the place of, the hero in hiding showing up or I'm acting from the place of being in hiding. I can't do one. I can't do both at the same time. So that's the strategies that are happening. But if I could give a quick tool that I use, which is a fascinating one for my life, um, I use a breathing exercise um, actually every day. And it's a breathing exercise. And what it does is it gets me to pinpoint something I want and release something I don't. So for me, it could be something I like, um, I receive peace today and I release anger. I receive peace today. I release shame. I receive peace today. I release fear. And what I do is on the breathing in, I receive peace is the thing I say. And breathing out, I say I release fear. Whatever the thing is you're dealing with, right? We all have those emotions. They all have a name attached to them. But there's also a, a, a contrary emotion that actually is empowering. So instead of just receiving the disempowering emotion and trying to work your way through it, what we do is we proactively say, okay, well, I feel like I'm dealing with fear today and what I want to be is a person of confidence. So breathing in, saying I'm a person of confidence, breathing out, saying I release fear, breathing in, saying I'm a person of confidence, breathing out, saying I release fear. I do it eight times every day. And, and it's just a reminder of, you know, whatever I feel like I'm dealing with, again, life by design, not by default. I could try and manage it when it comes up or I can destroy it before it comes. And so it's that exercise that's happening. And guess what I do every time I'm ready to speak, Randy? Guess what I do every time I'm ready for a conversation or an awkward or, you know, uncomfortable moment? I find myself doing this. 
I, and relaxing. Well, if, you're, if, you're, if you're the audio people, it's breathing out or breathing in and then breathing out, breathing in deeply and breathing out. Again, there's a scientific basis for why that, why that brings confidence, why that brings peace, why that floods your, your body and your neural system with blood and be able to do those kind of things. But the interesting thing is I don't say anything when I do it, and I haven't even recognized that I do do it. But what I do notice, and I noticed recently, was that I'm doing that, and there's a sense of peace that's constantly there. Because it's, a, you know, again, there's a science behind it, but what it is is it's a trigger to an action. And the action is me being able to walk in with peace, with assurance, with confidence by creating the habit of doing it ahead of time. I find that I'm doing it in moments where things are happening. And I recognize the result of it without actually having to go through the continual steps of it. So to me, it's becoming an active participant in life versus being just bounced around like a pinball in a pinball machine. Uh, that's been my experience and that's been where it's yeah. been most fun for me. Uh, you mentioned in that explanation and, and that it was like, yeah, exactly. I, you hit home with me as far as I've realized and recognized a few times where I'll have a, a triggering moment and I'll have the ability to respond in a certain way, or I'll have an ability to go down an emotional rabbit trail, but I've caught myself. I've, not responded the way I typically would have, but then to see the outcome because of that different response, because whether it's a family member, yeah. whether it's even a coworker or something like that, like you said, that's that lasting change that you will see as you continue on in this process. That's, that's what I heard you explain. And that, as far as that's what it, that's how it resonated with me as well It's just becoming, you become an active participant in your own life by design, life by design. And I think that's where it hit me the most with your description of your book as well. I appreciate you sharing even that breathing exercise, because I think that if we can, once again, just get, get calm, get centered in the moment, kind of forget about all the anxiety in the future, forget about yep. all your negative things in the past and just yep. get really calm, really centered in the moment. I think a lot of us can really uh, make better decision, decisions in those moments to impact those thoughts, those words, in those actions for sure. So I love, so I wanted you to repeat one more time. Cause I loved how you said that we think what we say, we say, I'm going to leave, I'm going to stop there. Please say that for one sure. more time because I don't think I'd ever heard it in that way. And it's like that you said it twice and I want you to say it again for myself. Yeah, and then absolutely. I'm going to repeat it later on, but yeah, please say that again. Cause that was super, uh, that was yeah. neat. I want to hear that again. Yeah. The phrase is what you think you'll say, what you say you'll do and what you do, you'll become. What you think you will say, what you say you will do, and what you'll do you'll become. And here's the secret that people don't realize. You're already doing all three of those. So what we're doing in Life Mastery isn't giving you something brand new. You know, if you're a person of faith, I could give you the scriptural backup as to why each and every one of those work to transform your life. But here's the truth of the matter. We're already thinking. The problem is it's positive, it's negative, it's somewhere in between. We're already speaking. The problem is we're our own worst critic and we verbalize it more often than we should. And we're already acting. Anybody in this audience, I could tell them this. Hey, what does a person who's depressed look like? And you would give me physical attributes of what that person looks like, right? Actions. What does a person of confidence look like? And you'll show, you know, somebody who's strong, who's resolute, chest is out, chin is up, all of those kind of things. We're already doing all three of these things. But it's by default, not realizing that if we take control of them by, you know, by design, we actually can use them to our benefit to see that, again, hero in hiding unleashed and showing up in every area of our life. Love that. So let's maybe uh, dig a little bit deeper into that unleashing, into that design part of life. Is there anything else as far as within the book or even within your programs that uh, we can leave the folks with here today talking about? trying to that discovery phase, whether folks are kind of going through this process, they're very early in the process and the journey, or they're maybe leaving a little bit more experienced. I would consider, I'm not an expert by any means, but at the same time, I've definitely been working on it for several years. I've seen yeah. some good results, but at the same time, I'm always trying to, to pick up new ideas. Uh, even what you shared today, even with the breath uh, idea and the breath work, that was fantastic. I'm going to implement even more of that into my life moving forward too. Is there anything else within your book or things that you work with, with your clients that we could leave folks with here today, even uh, as we move forward? Yeah, I'll uh, I'll unpack this one quickly, although it's it's more extensive than I have time to be able to share. Um, so again, within our course, we have the identities phase, which is a, its own module, and 
helping you to unpack that. We have the transformational strategies, which we use, which is the weapons you use in the rest of your life to really become that person of design. Uh, and then what we have, what I call the four pillars of life mastery. And all life happens in these four pillars. And it's identity, experience, meaning, and emotion. All of life happens in these four realms. You're either living from your identity or you're living from your experience. There's no in-between. There's no other alternative. You're living from who you're created to be or what your life has told you you are. Whatever you're doing today and the experience you are and the person that shows up today is because of the life that you've lived. Your past tells you who you are. Your present confirms who you are and your future results in who you are. And so in that place, you have these experiences that you deal with. And so really quickly, one of the things I unpack under experience is this for anybody like yourself. And thank you for being vulnerable and sharing your life. And I shared some of mine. We all have experiences, whether bad or good. And there's many that have marked us and given us an identity that's really a lie. But it doesn't mean that the experience didn't matter. It didn't mean that you just need to get over it. It doesn't mean that you just move past it, act like it didn't happen, right? You know, I've, I've moved past that, right? It's just a lie. There's nobody who believes it but you, and you're not showing that you've gotten past anything. And I'm not saying you as a general person, that's the life that I lived where I thought that I could leave my past behind, but it showed up in every action, decision, and emotion that I had. And so in that place, here's the thing that makes the pivotal difference. It's not the experience that you've gone through. We've all had challenges, grief, whatever. It's the meaning that you give it. But here's the difference that most people don't understand. It's not the meaning of the experience. I'm not taking a bad experience and saying, no, it was good. Because the meaning that we always take from the experience, like with you and your father and me with mine, isn't a, isn't a meaning of what the experience was, but the meaning that what my identity was in it. And so when you go through something and you've had a, a, a financial downturn, you've gone through bankruptcy, it's, it's not the issue of the financial decision and direction, right? That was a bad experience because of what? Here's the challenge in it. The meaning we take, which is the identity statement we give. And the meaning we typically give is always something around, well, you're a failure. The meaning I gave from a father who was domineering and, you know, had the way that he taught and the way that he fathered me was this, you're not good enough. You don't measure up as a man. It had nothing to do with the experience. The meaning is everything to do with an identity. And so really quickly, what we do, because I can't make different decisions in my present or in my future if I still believe who I am from my past. And so what we invite people to do is start to unpack some of that and say, okay, so this place of feeling not good enough, where's the first time you felt that? Well, I felt it when I was six years old and my father was disappointed in a grade that I had or whatever the thing is that you're walking through. And so we have a couple of steps. First off, identify the place that you first felt that emotion, that experience, that sense of shame or guilt or worry or insecurity. What's the lie that you believed? The lie I believed was I was not good enough. I was a disappointment to him, and I wasn't measuring up as a man. Okay, and then here's where the truth comes in, and here's where the transformation comes in. But now, as the person you are in this life mastery journey, what's the truth that you know? Right? The truth that I know is that he did the best he could with the equipping that he had as a father, but that had no bearing on me as a young man. I didn't have to measure up to him. I was already created as the person I was supposed to be to begin with. And in that place, believe it or not, Randy, there becomes this place of absolute freedom. Because now all of a sudden I'm not tied to my past and tied to an identity that I believed I was. I see the truth in it. And because I see the truth in it, the lie has no more power over me. Here's how you destroy lies. You destroy them with truth. You don't destroy them by ignoring them. And so we find that these have these perpetual behaviors that can continue to happen, right? I've been there in my life. Maybe you have, right? Where, I, again, my initial... My initial outcome of anything that happened that I didn't like was anger. The first response is anger. The first response is anger. We have a relational issue. The first response is anger. I bang my knee on a table. The first response is anger. Somebody cuts me off. The first response is anger, right? That came from a place of my life isn't measuring up and man, it's going to, or I'm going to explode or whatever the thing is you're thinking. And most of the times you don't. But in that place where you start to see the truth of your past and you start to see that I'm not that person that I believed I was. And no harm to that child. He was a six-year-old trying to figure out what life looks like and what I'm supposed to believe in this circumstance. But now that I'm in this journey and have these tools and truth in front of me, now I can look back and say, that's not the truth of what happened there. And when that happens, now all of a sudden, I'm not tied to it. I'm not, I'm not in bondage to what my past told me I was. 
And I've seen time and time again with so many clients that I work with that in that place, now all of a sudden, the rest of their life changes because the belief system that they had, those blinders that were on that told them this is all there is, still trying to use the tools, still trying to be better in life mastery. But when you have that pivotal moment of saying, oh, that's where it came from. In our work, and I'll leave with this or stop with this, we, we talk about dealing with the root, not the fruit. You, you know how you kill a tree? You don't kill it by destroying the fruit. You don't kill it by cutting off branches. You kill it by cutting off the roots. And it's the same with challenges in our life. Most programs, most of the time in most people's life, they're dealing with the fruit of their life. I'm taking all of the apples off the tree and, oh my gosh, they came back again. And I'm taking them off again. That's the life that most of us are living, myself included, before you find out that there's a better way. There's a way that we call life mastery. So it's dealing with the root of saying, where is the root of where this emotion came from? If I can deal with the root, destroy a lie with truth. Now, all of a sudden, every decision I make, every thought I have, every action I take from that point forward is absolutely transformed because now all of a sudden I'm not tied to something that was a lie. I'm living in what's the truth. Love that. So if folks are out there today, they're resonating with what we're saying, uh, they're understanding and realizing that maybe that there is a different path for themselves. They need to, to kind of go through some more discovery. I would love for you to maybe share with folks a story. We've kind of shared it, like you said, a little bit more of about ourselves, right? Trying to be as vulnerable as we possibly can. But has there been uh, any stories with some past clients or anything like that, that people might even be able to resonate even a little bit more with that has come to you? gone through this journey, gone through this yeah. discovery phase and kind of what that's led them to become on the, on the other side, even though, as we've mentioned more, more than once, it's, it's a continuous journey. I don't think yeah. there's a destination, but right. there's definitely a, a different outcome when you do the work. Is there anybody that comes to mind or it could be multiple people? Is there anything like that for a story? Yeah, absolutely. So a couple of people that come to mind. First off is, is a guy named Vance. Vance came to me actually because he, he was hospitalized and I had a chance to go and visit him. Somebody I was, I met through a friend. I had a stroke and actually recovered from it. I'm really uh, pleased to see that he re received a full recovery. But in that journey of him kind of walking through his life and starting to see who he was and become friends, um, come to find out there was, you know, again, life mastery is either living by design or default. And his default was kind of being that guy who was provider in the household, but not really showing up emotionally right? Because of past relationships, because of parenting and some of the challenges that he had in his life. He grew up as a young man that believed that he needed to be guarded against people who got too close, that he couldn't really engage in relationships because, you know, it always turned out badly. I, I don't have permission to tell his whole testimony, but he had, you know, parenting in a background that told him that you can't trust people even if they say they love you. Well, that plays itself out as an adult, fully grown adult, fully you know, intellectually understanding your life and everything in that. But still, we're tied to our past unless we do the things that we talked about in this conversation. And in that place, he was a great provider, very successful in his business and the things that he was doing, but emotionally irrelevant in his household. He would tell you that. I'm not saying that as a slam on him. Because in that place, he felt like he was doing everything he was supposed to. But when he gets home, then he's not really sharing with his wife. He's not really engaging in what life is going on. It's more of a report card of what happened during the day, not an emotional connection with, you know, what's really going on. And that played itself out with his children as well, right? Being able to help them with school, being able to get them to practice, being able to, you know, discipline them and do the things that he felt he needed to do to raise them into adults, but really never being there for them, really never being that person who's a listening ear, who's there, who's a confidant, who's who could be there to comfort and care. And so he walked through the Life Mastery course. And again, some of the tools that we just talked about and more that we haven't, uh, he's used in his own life to really start to unpack, hey, where's all of this coming from? Not really believing it himself necessarily, to be totally honest, because you know, you're know you hearing from your spouse, why, why, why don't you show up? Why aren't you here? Not that you're not here physically, you're just not here and connected with anybody. And in that place, still had a marriage that was, you know, lasting a multitude of years, had children who were teenagers, but he actually came to the place of saying, okay, well, I, maybe I need to do something different. And again, through the tools that we used, started to see where the holes and the hurts came from. And in that place, addressing it with truth and, and being able to see the transformation in his life and being willing to be vulnerable, being willing to be open, being willing to be authentic and honest, being willing to actually let his wife in 
to let his children come in and see who he really was, not trying to put on this face of masculinity, but really showing up as a man. And it, it totally changed his life. It, it changed his business because then as a manager of people, you know, who you are at home is who you are at work and vice versa. Who you are in your business is who you are at home and who you are at church or wherever else. You don't change. You think you do, but most people see through it to the true you. But in that place, everything changed in his life because now he was an engaging leader. Now he was a, a ever-present husband. Now he was a dad that his kids could hang out with. And it, and it changed his home life drastically because he was finally able to let go of things that were holding him back, which again, admittedly, he felt like his life was okay. It was just the results of his life that were a bit of a challenge and a bit of a disaster in his household and elsewhere. But in that place of seeing the truth and seeing who he could be and being willing to be what I say in the work that I do is the, one of the bravest people I know. I know that the work we do isn't easy because I know you have to examine and, and confront things that have hurt, that have been challenging in your life. But the people I work with, to be totally honest, Randy, are the bravest people I know because I'm being unwilling to ignore it, unwilling to just deal with it, unwilling to have the outcomes and the results of, of this kind of life that isn't complete. They're taking the other tact and saying, I, I'm actually going to do it. I'm going to open the doorway to things that may be uncomfortable so I can have the results of life mastery at the end. So he's definitely one that I had. I could talk about Brett, who was a person in business dealing with fear of failure. I resonated with him because we were alike in a lot of ways in that you were great on the outside, but nobody knew the guy who's waking up at three o'clock in the morning because finances aren't there and you're stressed out and you're believing everything's just going to fall apart. And you know, those internal conversations you talked about that nobody knows about, but you're struggling with because you put on that brave face in the morning and you tell your your spouse, everything's okay. And you go to work acting like you're the answer man who's got it all together, but you just don't know what's going to happen and nobody else does. And so for him, it was that place of understanding that, you know, success doesn't equal fulfillment. But in the place of me actually showing up and believing that I'm not just capable as a leader, as a business owner, as a person who's making decisions, but I'm actually exactly who I'm supposed to be. And that's good enough to have all of the results that I believe I'm going to have in my business. It's that place of living from identity. It's a place where instead of my business having to tell me who I am, I get to show up as who I am and my business flourishes as a result. So his business outcomes increased massively, but even more importantly than that, they became less of a report card of I'm good enough and more of a result of I am enough. And in that place, he actually could enjoy the success versus be happy for the moment that he didn't fail in this transaction, and then go out on the hamster wheel and try and do it again. And for him, it resulted in, you know, results and changes in his household because who you are at work is who you are at home. When I'm stressed at work and those challenges, you can't compartmentalize and shut it off and actually become that engaging and amazing individual in the relationships of your life. So the thing that he didn't know that was going to happen was his relationships got better. They weren't bad in his household, but they got so much better when the guy who was confident in showing up and being okay with just being that guy actually showed up versus somebody who's guarded, who doesn't let you in too far because I don't know, you know, what would you think about me if you only knew? Well, when he showed up as who he was created to be, he knew that that what guy was not just good enough, but whether I get a result of somebody else believing and encouraging or not, I'm still going to be great with who I am. Love that too. Thank you for sharing those stories. This work, and it's so important, folks, so we can't encourage you enough to go start down this journey if you haven't started already or, or to continue if you are. I say it a lot, or I have said it a lot on the podcast before. It's probably the most difficult work I've ever done in my entire life. It's yeah. not from a physical standpoint, but it's from a, like you said, an emotional. It's tough to open up those ideas and those beliefs and the things that we've been fed that, to believe and, and about ourselves. And yeah, it's challenging, challenging work, but I can attest. It sounds like just like with the stories you just shared that my life and my uh, relationships and my experiences have all exponentially grown better. Uh, and I'm always trying to get them even better than they are even today. But it's because of that work. And that's where I want to encourage you today as the listeners uh, to start down that journey today. If, if today's the day, then today, let's get it started. Uh, and this would be uh, with Mark and his resources would be a great place to start. So as we start to bring this one in uh, for a close, Mark, I appreciate all the wisdom you've shared, 
everything has been fantastic. Uh, some things that I'm going to start implementing for myself, which is always a lot of fun for me being the host of the podcast, right? I always learn, I learn That's right awesome. along with the listeners. Yeah, I appreciate that. But I would love to maybe see if there's just one more nugget of wisdom. Uh, you've got so much to offer within your course, within your book. Is there anything else we might be able to leave the listeners with? Uh, something, a big takeaway uh, to kind of bring this one home for a close. I think this uh, has been a fantastic conversation. I appreciate everything you've offered so far. Well, thanks so much, Randy. Yeah, the one thing I try and give everybody that I have a conversation with is this. You know, I, I went through a bunch of personal development programs, everything I could, right, to the point of bankruptcy. I was just intent on knowing that the guy that I was on the inside was actually going to show up on the outside, but I couldn't find ones that brought transformation. What I found was courses that brought change. And because I couldn't find a course or, or this roadmap to freedom and transformation, I created it with the Life Mastery course, you know, with the biblical teaching and my background and the things I knew in personal development and all of those things and, you know, thoughts and ideas and things that I found that worked that really encapsulated it all. I got it all together. But the one thing that I needed along the way was this unwillingness to give up on myself. Because I went through a, a long journey, right? I was in my 20s you know, late teens, early 20s, mid 20s, late 20s, trying to figure it all out in a bunch of different ways, as we already kind of alluded to in all the things we've talked about. But the one thing I did that I did right every time was I refused to give up on me. And I was willing to bet on myself one more time. So for you, wherever you're at in your journey, whether you're kind of figuring it out, it just sounds cool. Maybe I want to try and figure some of this out. I don't like everything about what's going on in my life. Or you're that person that's tried this thing, tried that thing, tried a bunch of things thought this would change you and it didn't and whatever the journey is that you're on here's the one thing i would give you is if you do this one thing if you bet on yourself right if you're willing to not give up on yourself you'll find the thing that matters i believe life mastery is a course that'll bring transformation i believe it's the best course out there because of the things it's done and the people i've worked with but here's the truth of the matter it can be the best course in the world but if you're unwilling to bet on yourself if you're unwilling to say i'm not going to give up until i get there then there's no course that you're going to be able to use that's going to get you there. But if you bet on yourself one more time, say, no, I know there's more than where I'm at. I know there's more than who I am right now, and I'm not going to give up until I get there. Then that's a person that's going to find that transformation, that's going to see the life mastery, that's going to have the things that you believe you do. It It really only takes one thing. All the other stuff will come in line at the time when it's supposed to. But the one thing is believe in yourself and bet on yourself one more time. If you do that thing, I guarantee you, you're going to find the life and the transformation you're desiring. Fantastic. So folks are out there right now saying, okay, raising their hand. I'm ready to bet on myself. I'm ready to go all in, figure out a little bit more about this life mastery, uh, dive a little deeper with you, Mark, and your programs and your books and that type of thing. Where are the best places for people to get to know you a little bit better? Uh, learn more about the programs, the book itself. Uh, what are the best places for people to connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I try to be a one-stop shop, so all of the things that I have, the offerings, the courses, and things are on my website, which is freedom-for-life.net. It's freedom-for-life.net. Out there, you can find the Life Master course that we talked about with all of the tools and strategies. Out there is also my book, The Quick Start Guide to Life Mastery. It's called Life Mastery, Living Life by Design, Not by Default. I also actually have a, a quick a discovery tool out there. It's a free tool. It's a quick survey. You take a, you take the questions, you give yourself an answer, you get your total at the end, and it'll tell you two things, where I'm currently at in my life mastery journey, and what's the next step I can take. So that's a free discovery tool. It really is something to just kind of say, gauge where you're at out there. Um, so all of those things are on my website. You can reach me through uh, the web, the uh, email that's on there as well. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, underscore, freedom for life, underscore. Uh, I try and bring weekly content to try and bring, you know, nuggets and revelations for the people that I work with just to be a resource for them. And I'm on LinkedIn as well. You can reach out to me there. And I'm pretty active on there as well to try and engage other people and help them in whatever way I can. So those are kind of my biggest. I'm on my, you know, I'm on Facebook and Instagram and all of those. But, you know, I'd rather than give you all those links, you know, LinkedIn is probably the best one to really reach out if you wanted to talk to me directly. Fantastic. And folks, we'll have all the links in the show notes. If you weren't able to get all that jotted down as, as he was describing that, uh, we'll make sure that we include everything where you can reach out to Mark, get in connection with him, uh, learn more about the programs, the book itself, uh, follow him on social. Sounds like he's obviously delivering some value uh, from a free standpoint as well. Hopefully you found some value in this conversation we've had today uh, when he reached out to me to potentially become a, a guest on the podcast. And I started to go down uh, and learn more about him and the offerings that he has. 
it resonated with me as we've kind of shared in this uh, little bit of a story about us back and forth, right? The beginning parts of, with our fathers, uh, the challenges of trying to figure out who we are, and then the process of going through that journey. Uh, sounds like he's got a lot of a lot of it figured out with this life mastery program, and I would definitely encourage you to. Uh, Get yourself involved. Figure out where you are. Uh, take this in initial assessment. Uh, I think I'm going to take that myself and figure out where I'm at in my journey, right? I'm always trying to grow, trying to become a little bit better. Uh, I think that's fantastic. So go definitely go to his website and, and grab that as well. Bet on yourself. You can become this dream person, yeah. this person who you're meant to be. You really can. If you do the work, it's going to be some work. And you've got to do it. I can't do it for you. Mark can't do it for you. But we can help and we can support. And hopefully this episode Amen. today will be supportive for you moving forward. So, Mark, I appreciate you coming on. This has been a fun conversation. I'm glad you reached out. And I'm glad we got this coordinated to make this recording today. This has been a lot of fun. Thanks so much, Randy. It made for a great day for me. So I'm glad we had the conversation. Good, good. At the beginning of the day, hopefully you'll have a fantastic rest of your day. And folks, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day as well. Appreciate your time and attention uh, for you to spend an hour or so uh, with us today is I, I'm super grateful for that. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity and chances for you to be pulled in different directions with different podcasts, different things going on out there in social media. But for you to take your time to get the, to this part of the podcast, I just want to express a ton of gratitude to you uh, for definitely joining us here today. If you wouldn't mind sharing this with your family and friends, if you can help get the message of the Rich Mind podcast and obviously Mark's message out there as well, we would greatly appreciate that. And uh, we'll look forward to coming back with the next guest again very soon on the Rich Mind Podcast. We appreciate you being here. Have a great day. Bye now.